How you doing everyone? Scott back again finally with an update. I've uh, been pretty lazy with my updates on lockdown. You know what it's like, the less you do, the lazier you get. So I just hope you know this is taking a lot of energy out of me right now. Um, I mean my body clock's absolutely shagged. Um, I'm up till like half four, five in the morning, just wide awake. So yeah, it's, it's weird, but um, I'll finally be back to work the start of July, so hopefully get a bit of routine back in my life. But the music's still coming in. It's going to be a mix between cassettes, CDs, LPs, and also a kind of mix between hard rock right up to, to thrash. So um, I'll just get stuck right in. So first the cassettes. Um, Tora Tora. Uh, Surprise Attack from 1989. Um, I've been offered this on vinyl a couple of times, but I've just never been in a position to take it. Saw this really cheap on eBay, so thought I'd grab it. Um, I'll pick it up on vinyl eventually, but yeah, a really good album. I wouldn't say it's it's hair metal, it's more melodic, hard rock, um, with kind of those kind of grittier guitars, but really good album. So if you've not heard that, um, Tora Tora Surprise Attack is really, really decent. And the second one you might have seen me post on Facebook or um, Instagram, um, it's Slave to the Ground by Skid Row from 1991 um, on black cassette. Um, just really a novelty thing. I've got it on vinyl and CD, so I thought I'd pick up the cassette just to kind of complete the, the collection. So. This was actually 29 years old yesterday. It's quite hard to believe, but um, yeah. Skid Row, Slave to the Grind, by far their best, I think. So that's cassettes. I'll move on to the CDs. I finally picked up the last two in the Noise compilation collection. So you have Gravedigger and also Tankard. Um, so if you've not seen these, I've shown a lot of these because I've, I think I've now completed the collection. Um, they're basically all two disc sets of the time they were at Noise Records. So, for example, Gravedigger is called Let Your Heads Roll, the very best of the noise years, 84 to 86. And the Tankard is called Oldies and Goldies, the very best of the noise years, 86 to 95. So, as you can see, two disc set on Digipack, and these are really cheap to pick up, and you get a ton of material on each one, you're getting, I reckon, over 30 songs on each compilation. So I was really happy to pick these up and they're really cheap. They're, they're only about seven or eight quid. So they are good if you're not sure. I mean, of course you can go on YouTube, but if you don't want to do that, you can pick these up really, really cheap. Um, and you can see here, there's um, Sinner, Halloween, Voivod, Creator, Camelot, Skyclad, and Running Wild. So, yeah, they're really decent. I wish they'd bring out more of those. So, yeah, moving on to other CDs. Gravedigger is a band that I, I've kind of started to get into. I've said this before that when you find a band that you quite like, but they've got a huge discography, it, it, it's almost off-putting because you don't know where to start. And I always find that I either start at the end or at the start, if that makes sense. And I always leave the 90s stuff to last. But with Gravedigger, I've actually done the opposite. I've gone 90s first. And this is from 1996, and it's Shuns of War. Now, the reason I kind of picked this was it's actually a concept album based on Scottish history. So, I mean, you've got the kind of generic song titles like uh, The Brave, which is the intro to the album, which is like a heavy metal take on Scotland The Brave with the bagpipes and stuff. Then you've got Scotland United, William Wallace, Braveheart, The Bruce, The Battle of Flodden, uh, the Ballad of Mary Queen of Scots, Cry for Freedom, it's that sort of thing. But it is, I think it's the first, it's the first release in a trilogy, I think. Don't 
don't quote me on this, but I think it's the first of a trilogy of like a kind of Scottish history trilogy. Um, so like I said, this was 1996. I think they've just released the last in the trilogy in the last couple of weeks. So I'll be looking to pick those up. But Gravedigger of that many albums from mid 80s to now, it's, it's kind of hard to kind of jump in. So I thought that would be a kind of apt album to jump in on. But I'll be definitely be picking up more Gravedigger in the future. So that is that one. And I also picked up, now I thought this was an album, but it's actually a promotional copy a CD single. And it is The Clans Will Rise Again. And it came in this just shitty little card a sleeve. And it has the songs Highland Farewell and Coming Home. So I think this was released in 2010. So I think this is off the second of the trilogy. Um, like I said, I'm not completely clued up on Gravedigger yet but um, yeah I kind of felt a bit stung so I checked the eBay listing and it did say CD single I just completely missed it so my own fault but I suppose a, a nice wee thing to have anyway. Uh, moving on uh, me and Mickey had a kind of like wee arrangement um, I let him know I was going to send him a couple of things and on his last video he said that he had a CD that he ended up having two of that he was going to get rid of one of them. So I said to him, look, I'll I'll buy that one off you. And he basically said, well, you're sending me something anyway, so I'll just send you it as like a kind of trade and I'll throw something else in. So uh, that album was Onslaught in Search of Sanity. Um, I will go into this album a bit more, but later on in the video. So thanks for that, Mike. And he also threw in White Snake's Unzipped. Um, I think these are a acoustic. Um, I think they're a acoustic versions of some of White Snake's love songs. So thanks for throwing that in, Mike. I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but um, or are you, are you trying to tell us something? No, it's actually really good. I like White Snake, and this will be really interesting to hear. I just got this in yesterday so um i'll have to i'll have to chuck this on and see what it's like so thanks for that mike uh, next up we have some riot so with riot again i have collected some of their older stuff i've collected their newer stuff but i always kind of miss that kind of middle ground of the 90s out so i thought i would um i'd give it a go and i wasn't disappointed so this is riot the Brethren of the Longhouse, um, from 1995, I think it is. Um, let me just check. I think it's 1995. So, yeah, so this is kind of like a concept album. It's kind of based on, like, uh, Native Americans. So, for instance, you've got songs like Last of the Mohicans, um, Wounded Heart, uh, Out in the Fields, Blood of the English, Ghost Dance, um, so that kind of stuff. The only thing I would complain about this release is it's on one of these thin digipacks. I'm not a fan of these at all. I think if you're going to make a digipack, you kind of make it a bit more substantial. But that doesn't take away from the music. Um, it's still really good. If you're kind of put off by 90s hard rock or 90s metal, don't be put off by Riot because they're still, they were still producing some really good stuff. So um, I really enjoyed this album. So that's Brethren of the Longhouse. And I also picked up from 2002, um, Through the Storm, which I've never really seen until I was searching for uh, Riot albums. I never really even saw, nobody really shows this kind of stuff, or anyone that I'm subscribed to anyway. Um, but again, just a good slab of hard rock metal um, from Riot. So... Yeah, don't ignore um, 90s and early 2000s Riot. It's still really, really decent. Um, so the last of the CDs are going to be actually prompted by Metal Mickey. So thanks for this, Mike. Um, it's from Creator. And again, one of these bands that I collected, I think I've got four of their newer albums. Um, 
and I was looking back and forward for their 80s stuff, but you know, it's it's just something I've never pulled the trigger on. I don't know why. Um, I've not even looked at the 90s stuff yet, but when Mike showed these reissues in his last video, I was all over them. They looked really good, and it was just really what I was after. So I picked up um, on Digipack, these are the 2019 reissues. So this is their debut, Endless Pain, which also comes with um, the Blitzkrieg demo bonus tracks and End of the World demo bonus tracks. So, yeah, creator in their rawest form in Endless Pain, but also really, really good. Um, I also picked up uh, Pleasure to Kill, which also comes with the Flag of Hate EP. And these are really well put together with booklets and liner notes. And I also picked up Extreme Aggression, which is actually really thick with the album and tracks live from Berlin in 1990. So they are really good packages, so I'm really glad I picked them up and finally kind of got my foot in the door with 80s, 90s, a creator so that is that so cheers for that mike pretty good recommendations uh, so moving on to the vinyl um sticking with the thrash exodus blood in blood out i think this is their latest release although it's from 2014 so it must be a while since they've released um any new material but a superb album you know you already know in previous videos that um, when we had the meet-up, we saw Exodus, Testament, Death Angel, and that's when um, my appreciation of Exodus really, really took hold. Um, it's, I don't know, it's not a band that I ignored, but it's just not a band I was... I, 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 and I don't know why, but it wasn't a band I was, like, super excited about listening to. Um, I don't... I, I really can't explain why, but once I saw them live... Um, I was, that was it. So, um, picked this up on eBay, eh, not eBay, sorry, Amazon. It's a really good price, so I thought I'd pick it up. Um, and it's just what you'd expect from Exodus, that just aggression, speed. Um, Zetro is just spitting those lyrics out. So, yeah, really good. And I was glad to find that it's... I think in the last couple of years when bands like this were putting um, albums out or heavy metal bands or whoever it is, it's like the lyrics get cheesier as they get older. But uh, with Exodus, they're still in that crazed mindset and um, the lyrics really come through on this. So um, really enjoy this. So Exodus, Blood In, Blood Out. Uh, next up is an album you all know. Uh, Metal Church and Eleven or XI. Um, when was this released? Two thousand and sixteen. Um, just a, a superb album. Um, this is also a gatefold. Um, yeah, Metal Church are a band that the more I listen to, the more I love. Um, I'm I'm really getting well, not really getting into their eighties stuff now, but really um, got the ball rolling picking up their 80s stuff on vinyl as well, so, um, yeah, just absolutely awesome, there's not really much else I can say about this album that hasn't been said already, but, I mean, songs like Killing Your Time, Signal Path, Sky Falls In, Needle and Suture, um, Shadow, um, Suffer Fools, just awesome, and this came up for an absolute steal on Amazon, so, I mean, I've had the CD since it came out, really, but, um, never really pulled the trigger on the vinyl, so glad I picked that up. So that's Metal Church and Eleven XI. Uh, next up is from 1990, and it's the third release from Flotsam and Jetsam, When the Storm Comes Down. Um, so this is a bit different from um, Doomsday for the Deceiver and No Place for Disgrace. It's not that... It's not that frantic aggression from the start. It's not that just fast tempo all the way through. This has got a kind of a few peaks and valleys, 
the the thing I would say that did let the album down is the production. Um, kind of suffers from that kind of Lars Ulrich, St. Anger, snare drum. It has that kind of thing going on. Uh, the drums seem really forward in the production as opposed to the guitars, which seem a bit kind of set back. Um, but, and it's a, it's a, it is a shame because the songs are really good. I mean, um, you can take speed and frantic aggression all day, but when an album comes out like this and you've got those kind of interesting moments in there, um, it's a shame when the, it's the production that lets it down. So, um, but yeah, it's a really, it's a really good album. So that's Flotsam and Jetsam, 1990, When the Storm Comes Down. Uh, next up, a bit of hard rock. Um, I think this is from 1990 as well. 1990 or 1989. Also in noise. Um, it's the third release from London. Um, Poya Del Rock. So you'll know from previous London releases, it's kind of that hair metal, um, glam metal style. This has got a real, real harder edge to it. Um, it's got a lot more substance, I think. Um, you've got that, I think, what's his name? Is it Nad Nadir the Priest? Because the singer went on to basically form a name called the Priest. I think it's um, I think it's Nadir the Priest who does the vocals, and he's absolutely awesome. So if you want a kind of a slab of hard rock with that kind of heavier edge on it, um, you can't go you can't go wrong with. Uh, London and Poya Del Rock. It's an absolutely shocking cover, but it's a really, really good album um, if you're into into hard rock. So, London. Um, also, London was that kind of band that kind of catapulted, or well not catapulted, but kind of started off Nicky Six. Um, members of Quiet Riot, um, Blackie Lawless. This is the kind of band where they all started. It's a shame that London didn't, uh, didn't get the recognition that the bands that these people went on to got um because it's it is actually really good stuff so that is london um, and i also picked up in search of sanity from onslaught on vinyl so i think in the last eight weeks i've picked up on vinyl cd and cassette just it's just one of those things that kind of all came together at the same time um i picked it up on cassette first um, ordered it on vinyl and then Mike said he had the CD so I thought I'd, I'd just as well grab it as well so this is the f well the first and only um, album with Steve Grimmett on vocals 1989 and it's it's a great album I, I love this album um, we actually had a discussion about this and The Force um, on our live stream so and while I'm here thanks everyone who who watched that it's just it's, su it's such good fun doing those live streams when everyone kind of uh, chimes in and has their has their own say on albums but this was an album that kind of got brought up and mentioned and we're kind of comparing this to the force how the force is a bit more loose a bit more thrashier when this is a bit more um polished and technical and it definitely is um my favorite between the two but saying that i have spent a lot more time with this album that I have the force um but I am just I'm drawn more to the technical side rather than the kind of loose thrashier side so um but yeah great songs on this um I think it was Mike that was mentioning the the intro the intro is ridiculously long um but yeah songs like Shell Shock Lightning War they do a cover of Let There Be Rock but I'll forgive them for that uh, Blood Upon the Ice Power Play, Welcome to Dying, which is like a, a two-part song, is it's just an awesome album. So, yeah, Onslaught. And, like I said, I do like the more technical stuff, but I would definitely go back and um, and pick up The Force, and I think it's, um, what's it, Power Power From Hell, or something like that. But it's they're, they're still really good albums. And to top it off, I picked up uh, sea Hags and their self-titled release from I think it's 1989. I've really not done my research on this. Not that I've had three weeks to do it. 1989 on Chrysalis. So I was actually kind of disappointed with Sea Hags. I'd heard this album before and I always thought in my head I thought it's a really great album. It's always been on my radar 
It's been on my, my want list or my watch list on eBay for ages. And I thought it was finally a time to just pick it up. And when I threw it on, I was actually just kind of disappointed. It wasn't really the album. I don't know if you guys ever get that, but you hear an album, you think, yeah, I'm grabbing it. And then when you stick it on the turntable, it's just, it's like you just feel a bit kind of deflated. Like it wasn't the album you thought it was. Um, and it was a bit like this with Sea Hags. Um, it just had, it was overly bluesy for me, if I'm being honest. Um, so when the kind of hair metal hard rock scene kind of switched a little bit at the end of the 80s, early 90s, and they kind of went for this kind of hard rock blues kind of direction, like Cinderella, um, bands kind of lose me a little bit. And I didn't realise it was so bluesy, but it does have those really bluesy riffs in it. Um, like Cinderella lost me with Heartbreak Station. I was, I mean, they had a bit of blues in Long Cold Winter, but when it got to Heartbreak Station, that was, it, it was too much, too much blues for me and not enough rock. Um, so that was what I was a little bit like with, with Sea Hags. So you would think about, this is kind of like glam metal, but just with a really like bluesy influence. So yeah, I was a bit disappointed, but I'll probably go back to this and maybe a couple of months time and, and see what I think and hopefully my, my mind can maybe adjust back to the way I thought uh, about this album before so yeah the only thing I would say about this album is I mean I really do like the cover but it's not a heavy metal hard rock cover um, and what I feel when if this was me planning out an album release I would never go for anything like this I mean if somebody's if a heavy metal or hard rock fans flicking through a bin and sees this cover, they're never in a million years going to think that this is hard rock. So, I mean, it's all about selling yourself, and this doesn't sell this album. So, that's the only thing I would say about that. So, yeah, Sea Hags. Um, disappointed, but hopefully I get the kind of... I get the point of the album back, maybe on another couple of listens. So, that is it. That is the end. So thanks for making it to the end, 22 minutes, that's not too bad. Um, like always, let me know what you think. It's a bit of a mixed bag today, so plenty for everyone. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers. Well, maybe not that soon. <laughs>